welcome back to Growing With The Rileys. I'm Trevin. And I'm Kaylee. We are a family of six here in Southwest Missouri, homesteading our backyard just under half an acre. guys this is week five already of our 22 week challenge uh, where we are challenging ourselves how much we can grow and eat within a 22 week period yeah so not much has really uh, been going in the ground we've been trying to get some stuff in but again working full time we we can do what we can do and you know each day we try to get something new in the ground it doesn't always happen but uh, we were able to get a, another batch of corn in we've gotten a couple different um, secessions of those so we're gonna try that out we got some more herbs and some more flowers all right so it's actually been a lot of happening a lot of stuff happening here in the greenhouse so we're excited about uh, getting our peppers in and just seeing them take off we've got our tomatoes down here so another project we're gonna have to be working on is getting a trellis system so I'll have that information up here hopefully soon these don't look like much. These are more tomatoes, because why not have more tomatoes? But fun little thing about these, these are from Baker Creek Heirloom Seed. If you could come here and see this, these tomatoes are gonna be super tiny. They're already getting flowers on them. They're a dwarfed, dwarf type. I think they're only supposed to get about this tall. They're called Orange Hat. And so I'm excited to see those and see how they turn out. Also another big thing, we got the other side roll up completed. So next is the fan. I've got to get some air circulation through here. Like right now, it's over 100 degrees in here. <laughs> it's really hot, but get some air circulation and I think we'll be good. Also one of the things we're just gonna show you, it's just project time. We had a bunch of lumber that was over here that I was not using so we got to clean up and this is just real life right now all the stuff from behind yeah so we're we're cutting it up tossing it that isn't usable and we're gonna save what we can so for harvest this week we got a couple things in we're still harvesting Swiss chard we had a few beets. We've gotten a handful of carrots, so that's been really fun. Those go really, really fast as soon as they're pulled. Uh, some more snap peas. Uh, our romaine lettuce is done and ready, so we're pulling that, and some of our butterhead lettuce. The one thing we are super excited that we got to harvest this week was garlic. This is probably one of the most enjoyable parts so far this year, I think. So not everything that we harvest from the garden comes in large hauls. Like, you know, our snap peas we're just pulling every day. You know, yeah. beets are here and there. Um, but the garlic is one of those crops where you plant a lot and you harvest a lot. We planted that last September. It took us eight months. Super rewarding for waiting and just seeing as well how much we, just how much you can get in a small space. We planted six and it was only in a four foot by three foot area. And so six heads of garlic. Yes. So, so the six, six bulbs and as you we just break off each clove and plant that. So we pulled all of this last Sunday. And what you do is you let it dry out in the sun for two weeks. Then we'll brush off the dirt and cut the stems off. And then we will store them inside. Also, you can see they're not perfect. They're not all the same size. I had nine months in my mind that that's how long it was going to take. I think doing some of the research it's saying seven to nine depending probably on the garlic this is an elephant garlic so it's a larger type anyway Kaylee called me and said hey the outer leaves look to be like they're yellowing I think it's ready and so we started pulling and sure enough it was so this garlic should last us a very long time uh, but what's fun about it is we like he said we planted this in September 
and we just harvested. We also went ahead and planted some spring garlic as well. So we have another small, what is it, a four by? Yeah, four by three bed. bed uh, of more garlic. So we should be good to go. And even with last year with our harvest towards the end, when it was getting harder to keep in our pantry, I just went ahead and peeled all of them and threw them in the baggie in the freezer. And so we just finished last, last month, we finished out the last of the garlic from last year. So this is one of those, it's very easy to grow. Uh, it doesn't take up very much space and you can totally replace something that you were buying at the store and have it on you. It might just be one thing, but that's a start. So a lot of what we've talked about with the garden is it's kind of the shift in thinking and how we prepare our food and what things we're eating, like things like turnips and beets and some of that, like I've never bought a turnip or a beet no. from the grocery store. Typically, we were just talking about this earlier, we might, <laughs> sounds really bad for people who are growing food for themselves. When we go to the store, I think we buy potatoes, broccoli, broccoli, carrots, carrots, sometimes salads, onions, and then fruit for our kids. Like it's really only a handful of, like every week we're buying the same produce. And so with the garden, it's kind of that shift of like, what can we grow? So what are we going to eat? But there are some things that are kind of those fun wins because it is that, that true, we're replacing an item we were buying at the store with something that we've grown. And so garlic and onions, and potatoes are some of those easy ones where this is a true swap. I was buying this at the store, now I am growing all of it that I need here in my backyard. And so that's what we did with the garlic. Yeah. All right, so with uh, some of the harvests that we are having, you know, we, we gotta learn how to eat with what we have. And it's not meaning that we have a whole entire meal full of that or full of that one or that our it's, whole meal is fully from the garden. That's no. not gonna be what happens. But we are trying to figure out from what we're growing, what how are we gonna use that in each of our meals. And so here are some ways that we've used what we've harvested this week. All right, so we're not pulling many carrots. They are about ready. I wanna let them go a little bit longer. We'll pull one every now and then just to kind of get, uh, get an idea how big they are. So we've been eating a little Snacky. bit, yeah, snacking our snap peas. But we've been able to use our turnips in a like a creamy potato and turnip bake. Very yummy, yeah. garlic and thyme. Very good. We've been harvesting our salads. We've we've made a pretty big Caesar salad yeah, with the romaine and butterhead. We've actually took that to our church potluck, so that's fun. Always fun to share things from the garden. It's one of yeah. my favorite. And then we saute the greens off of like our beets. Or our Swiss we, chard. Or our Swiss chard. We just saute that and we eat them with our eggs, which we're harvesting from our we backyard get from too. our backyard. So again, doesn't have to be just what comes out of the garden. All right, everyone, thanks again for joining us today. Uh, we are looking forward to all the things that are, are in store. We've got a big beet haul coming up, big beet harvest. And, and now we have almost everything in the ground. So it's just that waiting game of waiting for everything to grow and produce its fruit. Yeah, as we continue to harvest, we have empty ground that we got to get more things in there. So. Uh, we're learning that process. We're learning how to succession plant to make sure we have enough food throughout the year. So we're excited to share it with you guys and hope you enjoyed this video. See ya. Bye.